30 bad things everyone should experience once according to reddit number 30 getting stuck somewhere far from home late at night and having to find your own way back teaches you a lot of methods that might be useful in a bind alternatively in my opinion it'll teach your ass to maybe go a little bit earlier in certain situations to avoid this kind of shit happening to you at all yeah sometimes a bad experience will leave a taste in your mouth that will dictate what you put in your mouth in the future you know what i'm talking about number 29 geez i don't want to be that person but half of these are just shitty experiences that no one should actively go to experience someone put have a shitty relationship what the hell would i want to do that for so that maybe in the future you'd be able to see the warning signs of what this may end up being you know what i mean people who don't know their past are doomed to repeat it you dumb cuck you know what i mean you'll have no spectrum if you only have one thing going on in your life you won't know what's at the end or you know what i mean it's the bad days that make the good days better you stupid mother god damn it number 28 working in customer service yeah so you can really see what the scum of the fucking humanity on this planet really looks like you know what i'm talking about bowl cut moms rolling in here talking about you know what i'm gonna have to see your manager Okay, this coupon is expired, but if I don't get what it fucking says on here, I think I'm gonna freak out, okay? I am not taking out the fact that my marriage is not going the way that I wanted it to, okay? And that the guy that I married for money is still alive and I have to put up with that and I gotta deal with these ugly kids. That's right, they're ugly and one of them's retarded and I don't wanna have to deal with that. Yeah, I'm a scumbag, but I didn't ask for a retarded kid. Jeez. I'm gonna have to retire that that character because she's already too offensive. Too hot for YouTube. Number 27, uh, getting rejected by a girl after the first time. It's so much easier. What do you mean the first time? I'm guessing you cucks go out on dates with women only for uh, a period of time to pass before she realizes that she's done using you. I mean, I mean that she's not interested in you. Ugh. Number 26, okay. So with a, whoa, write, write me a book, why don't you? <gasps> Jesus Christ. Excuse me. Everyone should experience firsthand how money can destroy close relationships and how quickly that it can happen. I was dating a girl who had a lifelong friend with bad credit. Like, really bad. She wanted to buy a new car, but couldn't get approved for a loan and asked my friend to co sign. Then it turned out her credit was so bad that she couldn't even use her as a co-signer. They wouldn't issue a loan unless with her name, they wouldn't, they wouldn't issue the loan unless with her name anywhere on it. Okay, so just now I thought that maybe I was having difficulty reading something, but it was actually written by somebody who I guess learned English on the back of a cereal box. Is that rude? Fuck you. All right, I got a fucking channel to, to, to maintain here, baby. I'm kidding. He doesn't know that he's secretly writing for me as I thieve the things that he's putting down to like some sort of BuzzFeed article. That's all I am, apparently. It's audio BuzzFeed. Well, I'm not going to try to make sense of whatever he just said. We're just going to keep going. So she had the idea. Could you buy the car, get a loan, and I'll make the monthly payments until it's paid off? I told her, do not do this. There is a reason she has bad credit. Well, she didn't listen and bought the car for her friend. Her friend made exactly one payment to her. The next month, nothing. She started ditching phone calls, and then we find out that she's moved out of her apartment. Suddenly, this girl's family who had my friend... Wait, this girl's family who my friend has known for like 15 years is pretending they don't know where she lives and has no way of getting in contact with her. A couple more weeks and an envelope with a half a car payment three weeks late at this point shows up stuck under my girlfriend's doormat. The next payment comes due and nothing. So now my girlfriend is making the payments every month on a car that she hasn't seen in months. Her friend, who promised to make payments, is a payment and a half beyond behind it, and it's only been three months. Jesus Christ. The one thing she had listened to me about was that she kept a key to the car, 
So we had the idea that we'd find the car and take it since it was legally and morally her car anyway. So we spent, I don't even know how many weeks, every night, driving around for hours, hitting this chick's hangout spots, friends' houses, family houses, etc. Until one night, we find the car parked in front of her father's condo. My girlfriend jumped in, took the car, and drove it to another friend's house, who was going to let her put it in his garage for a while until things cooled off. This is, this is getting juicy, guys. We weren't two minutes gone before Bad Credit Chick is blowing up her pager. Yeah, it was that long ago. Wow. Having suddenly remembered their number. Anyway, long story short, this was a lifelong friendship, and this chick barely even hesitated at the chance to steal a fucking car from someone who was trying to help her. I like this list. I thought it was going to be crap. It's a pretty good story. You know, I gave this guy shit for fucking around on the on that typo, but you know, I'll, I'll upload it. That's a cute story. Thanks for sharing a little piece of your life. As we travel along on the list, what is it called again? Of 30 bad things everyone should experience once. I thought that was like an underage looking girl. That's why I had threw into the thumbnail. Is that cool, guys? Leave a comment in the comment section below, man. I don't know why my inner edgelord is coming out today. Uh, nobody's going to get triggered. You guys know I all I love you all, and that's why I'm making these. It's 6 p.m. right now. It got pretty late. I was searching for so much stuff today. I was auditioning for audiobooks. And um, I don't know. The time just got away from me today. Number 25. Indifference from a complete stranger when you are in time of need. That sucks. It seems oddly specific, but can really be translated in many situations from being stranded and trying to hitch like home um, to begging for money for your next meal. Given some time, you realize a lot of people are fucks. A lot are simply ignoring you completely and some will go far out of their way to help. It helps you be a better person. The thing is, you can't be gullible because there are many people trying to exist squarely off of the kindness of others. And some people who are manipulating that fact. There are many people who go out and panhandle or pretend to be homeless, even though they, they are not and they're well off, knowing that they can make a considerable amount of money because people will just give up what they have earned, um, thinking that, you know, they're not so well off. And it's shit like that that makes people wary, as we should all be, that, you know, we're not getting freaking swindled. You can't be gullible, guys. Number 24. Doing LSD or shrooms in a safe, friendly environment. Man, LSD sounds crazy, man. Look, I, I feel like the type that wants to try a psychedelic drug, but whoo. It's so easy to have a bad trip, dude. I don't know. Oh, man. Not, not the psychedelics, my bad, but I mean that too, but, ugh, ugh, kind of crazy, but, and also where am I going to get them, you know what I mean? Name some place where we can go and get that good shit and, and, you know, not have to worry, not to be looking over our back for the freaking police, the party time fun police, woo, 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 woo. you guys trying to open, you trying to get enlightened in there, gotta be fucked up, put that enlightening herb down, <laughs> number 23, being in a physical fight with another person, best to do it while you are young. There are so much less consequences. It is always scary, but it will help you understand how to handle confrontation better in the future. You will see it never happens like it does in the movies. Um, okay, you know, got into a number of scuffles as a young boy and uh, pretty, not recently, but like, fuck me. It's happened. It's, uh, it's amusing how much, uh, the thing is, like, I feel like when you're fighting, there's two modes. There's kind of like, I'm going to mess you up mode. And there's like, I'm putting you on the fucking ground mode. Do you understand? Like li life or no life. I'm putting you on the ground where you belong. And I'm going to keep you on the ground. And I'm the type of person where it's like, Hey, I don't want it to come to this, but if that's what you want it to be about, baby, Hey, guess what? I'm I'm all about it. Let's let's take care of business here. You know, I'm not I'm not the type to be emotionally provoked by strangers. People really got to come at me before I uh, retaliate in any kind of capacity. So this is this is just something that I have nothing to weigh in on about because I'll kill a motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? Number 22, live on a service job, minimum wage for a year. 
Why? Why would you wish that evil on anybody? A year? You know what I mean? What? When you're living with your parents? No parents as a safety net. No riches. No rich friends you live with. How, you can't live on minimum wage unless you have a secure, like a place already. You know what I mean? What are you going to do? Go shake somebody's hand and go, hey, I don't have any money now. But if you let me live here and then I work on minimum wage for a month, then I'll pay you. You have to have a deposit for most places. Fuck this number because it's like this guy's not thinking about it. You have to have a psh, number 21, man. For many men, a finger in the ass for good reason. Get your prostate checked. I do need to get my prostate checked. If anybody listening is a medical physician, I'm kidding. Um, number 20, take public transportation. I know a shit ton of people who've never taken it. I personally find it kind of soothing, except when I'm taking the bus home from work in the morning, i.e. right now, I could drive and I'd be at home in my bed. If I could drive, I'd be at home in my bed. Oh, well, blah, blah, blah. Number 19, being at the mercy of someone else after you've done something to deserve getting your ass whooped. Oh, I'm not saying everyone should experience getting bashed, but I think there is a lot of people out there with attitude problems that have never experienced the consequences of their actions. A little fear can be enough to make people think twice about being dickheads to others. Yeah, some people, man, they need to know what it's like to, to have that control taken away from them. They need to know what it's like to have somebody, you know, completely capable of standing over there and beating them within an inch of their life because they roll around with this illusion of safety and security and shit like this. And uh, sometimes some of them are actually very comfortable in what they do, if that's like beating other people or, you know, hurting them. But if they were to be in a position where they would be hurt or they would be beaten, it would kind of, I don't know, kindle a flame of what might have been humanity in them. So that when they are in that position with other people, they would remember what it feels like and think to spare that person. Oh, boy. But that would be a perfect world. You know what I mean? Again, number 19 says, I'm not advocating violence, but the stomach plunging into your feet because you know you done fucked up by being a tool to someone that isn't having your shit. Uh, that, I think, is a valuable lesson in how not to behave as a human being. Ooh. Oh boy. Number 18, near death experience. Oh yeah. You never really appreciate the finite nature of your own life until you've breathed what you believe to be your last breath. Then to have the brain go into panic mode, images flashing and a strong inbuilt survival mechanism kicking in, forcing every part of yourself to fight for life, then having it all go black. You wake up exhilarated, like nothing I've ever felt since or before. The air on your skin that you've never realized before, the feeling of air filling your lungs as you breathe, the smells and tastes are all amplified and it lasted for at least a year. The urge to savor every little thing in life and see all the previous annoyances as petty and meaningless in the grand scheme of things. It also puts things into perspective, the sheer terror of death, and I believe it gave me a greater level of sympathy for those that are not as lucky. I think everyone would be a lot less violent and warmongering if they felt the emptiness of death. Death. This brought me back to the uh this brings me back to the psychedelic thing because the psycho the psychedelic drugs um bear with me whether you choose to believe me or not trigger things in the brain that are like i don't want to call them fail safe type switches but let me turn down this music because it may be a little bit too loud and that ain't good but what i'll say is this as it pertains to some of the psychedelic drugs they let's say that you have a third eye you know what i mean and much like a microscope would allow us to see microscopic organisms that we wouldn't be able to see with the naked eye let's just say that there are things not physically around us but just about us that we can't see because our third eye is closed and maybe in this scenario in this instance the third eye represents chemical like 
shit that the brain is capable of of doing to us in the same way that you've heard stories about women who have seen their baby trapped under a car and then they lifted the car because the brain just made that shit happen you know what i mean the way that some of people get ready for a fight what when the brain just pumps that testosterone clean into their motherfucker and it's like they're it's almost like roid rage you see them just hulking the fuck out literally a literal thing where people bump just become capable of something that they need to do now um i feel that psychedelic drugs um bring us as close as we can get to some of the shit that happens in the human brain when people are dying when people are dying i we 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 literally know that there are things happening in the brain that are like a fucking explosion just like a chemical reaction that just releases all of this shit and has outrageous effects on the body because it knows that it's shutting down now. You know what I mean? And I've seen this shit on like, uh, what is it, a CAT scan? Oh my God. I've seen the brain light up like a Christmas tree. Maybe we should look for that shit right now. Brain when someone dies. How about that? What happens to the brain as we die? I, I wanted to see just like a, a GIF. Is that cool? GIF brain when someone dies. There it is. That's the GIF I'm looking for. No, that's someone dying while having a thing though. Wait, why is this a know your meme page? Oh, it's somebody dying while having an MRI scan. We can, we should Google it now. What happens in the brain as you die? You know what my point is. I'm saying that uh, near death experiences, what happens in the brain before dying? In the moments before death, the heart plays a central role. Conventional wisdom says that is, is the heart stop beating and blood stop slowing, blah, 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 blah. Jesus Christ. Explain it like you're five, I guess all roads would lead back to Reddit. So explain it like I'm five. What is happening in the brain when you die? And someone responds. What you're asking is an extremely complicated question that still we don't know for certain, but I'll try to explain it as best as I can. The brain works by neurons sending chemicals called neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, and ACH are a few examples to each other, basically. These chemicals control everything about your brain, your mood, conscious thoughts, memories, movements, etc. There are approximately 100 billion neurons in the brain. It's the most complicated object ever discovered. And each one sends about 40 to 60 signals per second. Quick side note, the myth that we only use 10% of our brain is completely false. All areas are always active. Just some are more active than others at specific times. Clinical death happens when breathing and a heartbeat stop. During this time, the cells in the body are still alive, and the person can be revived by performing CPR or using a defibrillator. This would be when your friends experience death. The difference in their experience were most likely caused simply because their brains are biologically different without knowing more specifics i can't give a better explanation for the individual cases to answer your question during clinical death the brain is still technically alive but the person is unconscious and will be permanently dead very quickly biological death happens four to six minutes after clinical death and it is caused by a lack of oxygen getting to your brain after this time the cells in the brain and the rest of the body but not relevant die what happens after that depends on you know religion you guys aren't telling me like it feels like he was like fucking you know breaking the surface of what was going on when he started talking about the numbers of neurons firing in the brain i like to think that let's see Let's say if uh, it's sending 40 to 6 signals a second, I like to think if when it, it starts freaking out, maybe if it's not getting enough oxygen, it starts rapidly just firing even more. You know what I'm talking about? And that's the same kind of effects that maybe the drugs could have, but we don't know. 
because we're not willing to research it. What are we, some kind of fucking, you know, science guy? Like Bill Nye used to be, and then he sold out, that cuck. But I guess we're not supposed to be mad at him because he's old. And if we were young, we would sell out. Let alone when we were old. <sighs> Selling out. Kick ass. Number 17. On the list. <laughs> quick reminder. On the list of 30 bad things everyone should experience once. Is as follows. Minor car accident. So that you understand even if the body, if nobody is hurt, how quickly it happens. How quickly it happens, how hard the car jolt on the collision, and how much hassle it is to get through the insurance, etc. It may be a hassle, but hey, you're alive, you know what I mean? It happens where two drivers have driven into me in the past. <sighs> I drive with real caution for months afterwards, and I'm extremely attentive to the road as a result. Well, that's good. Number 16. Fall failing at something. Good. Yeah, everybody needs to experience that. Because after that, you'll grow and be able to, one, achieve more, two, use it as motivation, three, know that failing is okay. I wouldn't say that people will learn to, to know that failing is okay so much as not have a, a terrible reaction the first time it happens. I think the sooner some things happen, the better. It's like a relationship that you know is uh, it's just not going to work out. You're, you're going to want to end it sooner than later because the reaction will be perhaps far greater <laughs> at the wrong time than it would early on. Number f is that thunder? Number 15. Right before you both get off, take a real deep breath. The extra oxygen goes straight to your brain and makes your orgasm about two times more intense. You're welcome. Enjoy falling off the bed. <laughs> and somebody said both. Does it work by myself? <laughs> somebody else said yes. Just hold your breath in or tie a spiked leather belt around your neck and temporarily hang yourself with your ankles strapped to your thighs while the room is on fire. Okay, number 14. A relationship with a superficial slash pretentious person makes you appreciate humble people even more. Well, you're talking about basic people, man. Superficial and pretentious people are not the opposite of humble people. They're just fucking... Ugh. They're just the worst. They are what society dictates they should be. So, um, fuck me. It's kind of like the equivalent of seeing uh, somebody trying to imitate something they saw on television or in a magazine. Because, you know, we're on Reddit. We like memes. Let's watch a Filthy Frank video or go to watch people die. You know, not terribly insane dank shit where, you know, we're, we're, we're on the fucking parts of the internet where we're looking for a slave or you know we're, we're cruising necrophilia forums because we want to see how people getting dug up and fucking people or we're trying to see how much that this one mortician that we know will will charge us to have a little bit of time with a dead body i'm not talking about crazy dang you know what i mean but i'm not talking about basic we're not on facebook we're not taking pictures of our food and putting it on instagram you know we're not we're not showing people our, our hilarious and outrageous uh what's that one vine site that's like uh, it's music. You know what I'm talking about? I know I sound like a grandpa, but it's because fuck that site. And even if I was that age, I wouldn't be on no corny ass sites lip syncing to a song. I can sing myself, bitch. And y'all should learn how to sing too. Even though I know some of y'all just born can't hold a damn note. What the fuck? Guys, I love you to death. And um, here's a special thanks as usual to my patrons who somehow managed to keep growing. I'm so proud of you all. You're all pretty sexy. I can't. I can't get enough of you, and I don't want to miss a thing, cause even when I dream of you, the sweetest thing will never do, cause I love my patrons, and I don't want to, I don't want to miss one smile, I'm sorry, what I was saying is, you know, everybody keeps uh everybody keeps becoming a patron but there's a there's a it's a very clear on there you guys can like request that i read something for you or you can request uh, a song and nobody's requesting anything and that's fine but uh, maybe i need to write a rap or something 
I don't know. Love you guys. Let's continue on the list of 30 bad things everyone should experience. According to Reddit, you think you think anybody's gonna get really uh like twisted about this like underage looking girl? I think she's like an adult. I think this actual girl is an adult, and she just has braces. It's not it's not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. But uh, I I want to know if the idea of me putting an underage girl with her titties all out like it's not like it's her fault that her titties that big. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's my fault. Okay, that her titties that big. What the hell? Number thirteen. Thank God I don't want kids, man. Can you imagine if I had a kid and then they were like outrageously overdeveloped as a girl? That's 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 already a strike. If you have a kid and it's not a boy, you're like, oh, man, already is just like, fuck. You know what I'm talking about? Jeez. All right. 13. Let's do this. It's such a small list and I can't even stick to it, guys. I love you. Number 13. Completely failing and having to pick yourself back up. We saw this one already. Number 12, having a terrible roommate slash flatmate. It really makes you appreciate future living situations, especially with a significant other. Um, I, I feel like I can watch TV and stuff and movies maybe and think, God, I don't want anybody like that. Or to be honest, I can just live through roommate experiences on Reddit. Type my name, C-Y-A-E-L, and then roommate into youtube and i'm sure you'll get a fucking list of people uh and that's another thing that's kind of creepy guys you know we're approaching a point soon where it's like i've done a list about just about everything and i'm willing to do this for as long as i can get away with it but um that's fucking crazy imagine a day where i type in my name and then a random word and like five different videos come up what the fuck hour-long videos this one's gonna be short though so it's fine number number 11 sounds like my voice is gone guys huh and it is because i've been recording all day <clears throat> i've been recording all day as we reach number 11 on the list of 30 bad things that everyone should experience once 11 reads as follows, watching someone die. I was just talking about this. This is what we do on that one subreddit, watch people die. You guys want a bit of that juicy woosie? You know what I'm talking about? Should I take them there? I can't take y'all to watch people die. That would be crazy. That would be negligent. You know what I'm talking about? If you don't want to see nobody die right now, then maybe you should look away from the screen. I'll tell you when to look back, okay? I will tell you when to look back, okay? But right now, here it is. Look, it's just a helicopter in the air. What could possibly? Oh my God! You see what I'm talking about? You see what it's like? it was? It's as simple as that. It wasn't that big a deal. There was nothing gory there. There was nothing crazy. I'm sure he's fine. He, you know what I mean? He landed on. There was a there was an airbag down there. The guy's fine. Okay, not funny, Kyle. Not cool. Everybody has an off day, and I live my life in front of you guys. So just let me get away with being weird one day. I'm tired. What do you want? But 11 isn't just saying, you know, watching someone you don't know die. He's insinuating that you should watch someone close to you or related to your life as they drift away into nothingness. Number 11 continues. When I watched my grandmother die, I looked at my dad holding her hand. At first, I thought to myself, I'm going to do the same thing too. Then I thought, someone is going to watch me die too. It was at that moment that death no longer scared me. I really didn't expect him to write that. I didn't expect him to write that. <laughs> Somebody else says, death started to scare me again when I buried my father. Treasure the, the gap between losing your grandparents and your parents. When there's no one above you in the chain of mortality, things look a lot different. Look, man, I didn't expect that guy to say that he didn't fear death anymore. That's kind of weird. And what makes you think that, uh, you know, you're going to get to die on a bed where everything's growing dim around you. You could go out any second just like that. Lightning is fucking striking outside of my window so intense that it's like a light show i wanted to go walking and play a little bit of pokemon go but it doesn't look like that's happening especially with all these people i gotta get back to you have any idea how many messages i've been 
Hannah, forgive me. Today's been a very bad day of me just with the phone off and trying to get some recording done. I haven't really talked to anybody. Mm. Oh boy, this is the worst. I apologize, guys. Number 10. Working in retail. <laughs> we read this already. We read it already. Number nine, being humiliated or being in. <sighs> being in a bad relationship. Hmm. Being in an accident. It's a throwaway list, boys. That's what this is. This is a throwaway list. 